the smiles of Patricia and Cliff Burns had faded, just like their marriage. After years of reported domestic violence, Patricia had enough. When he got violent, he would like black out and there's no stopping. She and her daughters moved into this upstate New York apartment, but trouble followed them. Police say Patricia's new boyfriend, Ted Backus, assaulted her, then fired a gun into the ceiling. Both Ted and Cliff would have orders of protection to stay away from Burns. And just as it seemed the mother of five would be forever cursed in the love department, she started dating a new man. She said she was so in love with him and he was just a nice guy. The impromptu kitchen dance parties returned and the Burns women started to put the abusive past behind them. You and your sister did not talk to your father. He, he told me, he was like, never talk to me again. And I was like, if that's what you want, that's how it's gonna be. It had been nearly eight months since Cliff had communicated with his girls. But as the holidays approached, 14 year old Autumn would extend an olive branch via text message writing, quote, I just wanted to tell you I love you and Merry Christmas. His response? was downright creepy. He said, I have a special gift coming soon, something for everyone to talk about, and it will be hand-delivered on foot, not by car. He continued, quote, a very special gift. I hope all your friends are there to see, especially Harley. You believe that December 22nd text message was a direct threat mm -hmm. to you and to your family? Yep. So did Harley's stepsister, Megan, who immediately shows it to their mother. My mom was actually taking out the ham to defrost it for Christmas. And I was like, is he going to come up here and kill us? And she goes, Megan, no, no, Megan, he's he's mean, but he's evil, but he's not that evil. Little sister Autumn responds to her dad, quote, get it together. I know what you think you want to do. And believe me, that won't end well. The only reason you feel so bad is because of what happened to your parents. You haven't ever got the time to grieve. I think that everybody just assumed he was going to come up there and beat up mom. Two days pass. It's now the evening of the 24th, Christmas Eve. Harley leaves to do some last minute shopping with friends. We actually took a picture that day, a selfie by the Christmas tree. And the last thing I, she said to me was, I love you, be safe. Patricia was in the kitchen preparing Christmas dinner when the devil arrives at her doorstep. He knocked on the door and just swung it open. She was like, oh, backing into the wall. And I was like, oh my God. And then all of a sudden I see somebody in full camo, even a mask pushing mom up against the wall. Megan tries to help. And I was just punching him, trying to get him off of her. I didn't even see the knife. She manages to pull down the attacker's mask. It's her stepfather, Cliff. Autumn was standing there, and she was just screaming. She didn't know what to do. And I was like, call the cops. Call the cops. 911, where's your emergency? My, my mom's bleeding out on the floor. My dad just came in, and they stabbed her. And she's dying, and she's, she's bleeding out. I saw that she was kicking him, and she was like, Cliff, please don't. I love you. You don't have to do this. She was, like, pleading. But Cliff, blind with rage and armed with a giant honey knife, continued his violent assault. She's not, she's not. I didn't even know I was cut at first. I was still trying to help my mom. And I looked down, and my whole arm's open. And that's when I realized I was stabbed. I heard my mom in my head go, Megan, run and go get help, go get help. So I ran outside. I was so in shock that I tried to hop over a snowbank because there was no room between the car and the snowbank that I was stuck in there. Inside the house, the vicious attack was finally over. He's on foot, he ran. I don't know if What's he's he wearing? He's cool. He's like 5'9", five, 5'10". Five, he's bald. He's wearing camouflage right now, and I think he's going to go out into the mountains. Megan, still stuck in the snowbank, was frozen with fear when Cliff made his way outside to find her. He was walking towards me, and I was like, Cliff, why? Cliff, why? I was, like, getting ready to be stabbed in the back. I was like, he's coming for me. Fortunately, Megan's screams for help were heard by people at a nearby restaurant who came out to see what was going on, spooking Cliff. If those people didn't run out, he probably would have finished me off, too dripping blood everywhere. 
Megan managed to free herself and stagger back up the stairs into the apartment. It wasn't good. Oh my God, my mom's dying on the floor. I'm on the floor. My sister's going to die. You need to get people in here. Once I saw blood coming from my mom's mouth, I knew that she wasn't going to make it. And I was like, I was like, Autumn, tell her how much you love her. And she goes, why? Mom's strong. Mom's strong. She's going to live. And I go, tell her how much you love her, Autumn. Is Mom, she breathing? Stay with us. You're stronger. You, you can do this, Mom. I know you can. She's dying. She, she's on her way. Help. Help. Ma'am, ma'am, ma'am. I, I, I know. I'm, I'm trying to get no, people there. No, no, no. No, no, no. No, no, no. Miles away, their sister Harley was eating McDonald's with friends, laughing and having a good time when she started noticing some strange posts on her sister's Facebook page. What were they saying? They're like, Autumn, where are you? What's going on? Why are there cops at your house? I called the house. Megan picked up the phone. I tried to save her. I tried to save her. Megan's screaming. He ran. He chased after me. I ran. Crying, frantic. I tried to help her. I came all the way up here to kill her. Harley races to Glen Falls Hospital, still not knowing just how bad things really are. Autumn comes busting through the store with blood on her. She's like, Harley, I couldn't do anything. I couldn't do anything. And I'm just still like, what is going on? Like, why? Why is there blood on you? Like, where is everybody? Doctors were feverishly working on stepsister Megan's badly slashed arm. The wound so deep it reached the bone, narrowly missing an artery. But for their mother, Patricia, there wasn't anything they could do. The nurse was like, she's in there. She's, you don't want to see her like this. And I was like, I don't care. I want to feel my mom's hand. I want to feel her warmth. It was too late. Her multiple chest wounds, too severe. Do you believe if you were there, you would have been killed? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I do. Just after the incident, Burns got into his vehicle and he took police on a high-speed chase. He ended up right here in this parking lot at the Warren County Sheriff's Office. Under Sheriff Sean Lambery had just been called into duty. And I said, what are you doing? He says, I've done a bad thing and I need to go to jail. Coming up, a killer's emotional. I just wanted to see my babies on Christmas. An often explosive interrogation with investigators. You were involved with it, you <laughs> What he says pushed him over the edge. I couldn't take it no more. <laughs> what transpires in the next five hours inside this interrogation room is a Jekyll and Hyde tale. <laughs> Emotional. I just wanted to see my babies on Christmas. And aggressive. Thank <laughs> you.